praise God. With, with, with all the honor in our hearts, sir. I want to welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Help me make him welcome. so much let's pray father we bless you and we honor you we thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple you have gathered us tonight to bless us and I pray that you will give us very mighty visitations tonight and we decree and declare that Jesus as always will be glorified in this place for in Jesus name I pray while standing, I want you to please help me honor your dear man of God and his wife. Thank you. Hallelujah. I have, I have, I have profound regard and respect for people who are very deep in the spirit and yet garnish with a lot of humility. May the Lord bless you. I truly honor you and thank you. One of the ways you know that a man has met God is that you would see the absence of self, that his entire being just reflects the glory and the grace of God. And then please help me honor and bless my dear friend and brother, Pastor Jakes and his dear wife. Thank you. Hallelujah. When, when Pastor Jakes told me about the, the stretch that has been happening in this ministry, I was very humbled. It takes a lot of passion for God and stamina in the spirit to stretch. It's one thing to fast for that long, then to pray in the morning and to pray in the evening. It takes more than desire. There is an engracing that must come upon a man. And I really truly salute this vision. It's impossible to give God this level of commitment and then not having atten his attention in an unusual way. So um, really my assignment is, I, I came to pray along with us. That That's really, so I hope we we'll, we'll just pray, it's just to, to pray along with us. I believe in the ministry of prayer, but then I believe in effective prayer, prayer that works prayer that produces results hallelujah so um, what we'll do is I will just give a charge we'll pray give a charge we'll pray wherever we stop would that be fine so let's pray in the spirit for a minute or two and then we'll be seated when you pray in the spirit you open up your spirit man
God bless you. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Let's start from there. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus was teaching and his character in his teaching ministry was to use parables um, when he was teaching to a mixed multitude he would usually use parables to explain the mysteries of the kingdom and this was a parable the bible says luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable unto them to this intent or to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint so Jesus here, whatever else he's saying, is to buttress on this point, showing the power of prayer that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He encourages all men to pray, not men in trouble, not men in need. He says the moment you realize you are a man, it is part of the requirements to remain alive part of the requirements to remain effective he says all men not men in need not men in trouble god never prayed as god but when god became a man he prayed there is no record of god praying as god but when he became a man in the person of jesus he prayed even though the word he prayed and today, because he ascended to heaven and he's seated as a man, he still continues to pray, making intercession for the saints. Prayer is for men, not men in need, not men in need of power, not men in distress. Prayer is for men. The idea that prayer is just an emergency strategy to solve problems is the reason why most believers are prayerless. Because the narrative that has been sold to believers for many years is that prayer is just an emergency mechanism that helps you to solve problems. You see that? In my opinion, the highest expression of humility is to be prayerful. Prayerlessness is pride. Because it is proof that you are declaring self-sufficiency outside of the assistance of heaven when men pray it is an expression of deep humility before god in recognition that unassisted and by yourself we do not amount to much are we together so he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint second scripture luke chapter 11 jesus was confronted by his disciples over the subject of prayer and the bible says it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased one of his disciples said unto him lord teach us to pray so you don't just pray you are taught to pray effective prayer comes from a sound teaching ministry to understand the dynamics of prayer that produces power he said teach us to pray luke 11 and verse 1 just as john taught his disciples to pray now you must understand that in this scripture they were not prayerless people the issue was not prayerlessness the issue was inefficiency in prayer they noticed that there was a way Jesus prayed that produced power and produced results. They were not prayerlessness. They were, they were not confronting the issue of prayerlessness. They were prayerful people, but their prayer was not producing results. Can I tell you, it is impossible to remain indefinitely prayerful in the presence of consistent lack of results. If you keep praying and praying and it does not produce results, eventually your fire and your fervor will dwindle. When people pray and their prayer commands results, it is difficult for people to become prayerless under that condition. 
the reason why our churches have people frowning at anything prayer is because subliminally over the years they have learned that this kind of prayer does not work so their refusal to come for prayer meetings is just a polite way of saying i do not believe in this hallelujah he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and now the disciples confronted him and they said teach us to pray let's see what he taught them in response to that question and he said unto them when ye pray this must be your approach to prayer are we ready now number one our father he's teaching how to pray and he's saying in approaching prayer the first thing is you must understand the person you are speaking to the revelation of the person you are speaking to can determine the entire construct of your prayer life he says when you approach God in prayer you must realize that he is our father the word father comes from the Greek word Abba it means source it means sustainer it means defender it means protector that means in approaching prayer if you have plan B then he is not Abba Abba means you must approach him with the consciousness that I do not have any other option I come to you as my source the source there does not just mean the beginning the originator that when you pray he's not just saying recite this as a chant he's saying approach prayer with this consciousness number one our father you are Abba the fatherhood of God is is a very powerful component in effective prayer you must understand the fatherhood of God and Jesus himself was teaching us about fatherhood and he said if you been evil remember that scripture Matthew 7 from verse 7 when he was teaching on prayer ask and it shall be given seek you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you and he said for everyone that asketh receiveth for him that knocketh it shall be opened is that true and then and he says or what man is there of you of whom his son asketh bread and he will give him a stone he's confronting fatherhood now or if you ask for a fish he will give him a serpent verse 11 if ye then being evil do you know what he's saying he's saying by your nature you are evil and wicked people but even in that depth of wickedness there is still a provision to honor fatherhood that as wicked as you are you still have that sense of compassion that when your children confront you you can be excited to do them good even though you are wicked people then he says how much more shall your father so God's definition of father is not just one who has a son is one who is quick to give the ease of release is one of his definitions of fatherhood are we learning now so that when you approach prayer the fatherhood the consciousness of the fatherhood of God will give you the audacity to know that you will receive you can confront a deity and you're not sure as to his intent with respect to your request but he's saying this God you are approaching is father everybody say father, father. one more time say father. father it is very powerful the fatherhood of God if you being evil know how to give good gifts so when I approach God in prayer I am not praying to the warrior I am not praying to the lion of the tribe of Judah he is all that but he is father are we together there are men here who are multi-dimensional all men a man can be a pastor a man can be a businessman a man can be and whatever dimension you approach is a dimension that is revealed to you are we together if I want to meet the CEO I have to go through the protocol of meeting the CEO and while I'm queuing in annoyance hoping for a chance to see him a young boy will run and pass everybody and run because he's not going to meet a CEO he's going to meet father are we together number two 
we're still examining Luke 11 our father the second revelation on prayer that Jesus taught them is which art in heaven that means in approaching effective prayer you will need faith because it's in a dimension that is not physical are we together now that understand that even though he's your father there is you are operating from a duality of realms you will on you will need to understand the component that connects the invisible and the visible our father who is not physically here with me that means i will need to understand faith in dealing with him you must approach that father in faith because you are dealing with a reality that is beyond the realm and the scope of science how am i sure that he's hearing me faith hebrews 11 and verse 6 he says for without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto god must come having this consciousness number one that he is he exists and then number two he is a rewarder it's not what he does it's his name he is a rewarder he is he exists are we together then number three hallowed be your name i just want to touch on this very quickly and then we'll pray hallowed be your name that means don't get too familiar with his fatherhood that you forget that that father is still god you must approach with the spirit of reverence do not allow the consciousness of his fatherhood make you abuse it because you see even though he is your father he is god the consciousness of the fatherhood of god can give room for a lot of carelessness even in prayer like you see a lot of believers do but he said you must keep that component of reverence that even though he's your father he is god hallowed be your name the word hallow means to revere your office the name there means his office even though you are father i come with regard and reverence to that office then number four it says thy kingdom come this is powerful he's teaching them how to pray that in your prayer now he's beginning to make if you ever will ask anything it is that your kingdom come you know what this means the kingdom here refers to the fullness of the life the culture the sphere the kingdom represents every physical territory or every geographic definition where the influence of a king has been allowed to find expression it is called his kingdom so he says in prayer you must desire ultimately that his kingdom his culture his life his government let it come and he says let it come in earth not on earth in earth the first earth being you you see that now that earthen vessel it says when you pray you must desire that your life becomes an effulgence of the culture the lifestyle of heaven your kingdom come your will be done this is how his kingdom comes everywhere his will is done his kingdom has come you see that now the kingdom of god the manifestation of the kingdom of god depends on his will being done everywhere his will is allowed to find expression his kingdom is made manifest in my life as the first earth and then my territory do you know why he's teaching you this he's teaching you that i know you have a lot of prayer requests but the reason why you even have prayer requests in the first place is the absence of the reality of the kingdom that if the revelation of the kingdom in experience finds expression you will not even need to ask the things you are about to ask that i will answer them but ultimately it is for your kingdom to come and your will being done and you will not need to talk about rent again you will not need to talk about trusting god for some miracle somewhere that those things are side effects of the kingdom not finding expression is someone learning now yes thy kingdom come how by your will being done in my life and in my territory then he says give us 
this day it tells you how powerful God's giving character is that he gives daily now let me tell you this it takes a lot of love to give daily to the same person he says do not be afraid have this consciousness that God is a giver but look at the extent of his giving he gives daily the government pays people monthly businesses pay people monthly investments pay people quarterly and annually but he's saying you are approaching a father who is a giver and the structure of his giving is that he gives daily that means just because he gave yesterday do not be afraid to ask again he is not going through insufficiency give us daily our daily bread you know what your daily bread is your daily bread is not food your daily bread is everything that makes for your efficiency per day everything the favor you need the relationships you need all of them are called your daily bread the purpose of bread is to keep you alive and fresh so all of the components I need within my space to make for my efficiency per day finances relationships are we together the engracing the favor give us our daily bread very powerful prayer is someone learning god gives and he gives daily give us our daily bread now this is a very powerful one and he says forgive us verse 4 our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us I wish I had time to deal with this he's saying you must understand that this same father is so benevolent it is within his power and with joy and excitement to grant you forgiveness for anything that can give Satan a legitimate ground to accuse you and that while you do that reserve that consciousness and apply the same rule in dealing with men are we together now he said forgive us our trespasses the word there is not necessarily sin is the word trespasses our defaulting that which comes by reason of wearing a human body the limitations that come by reason of being human that in as much as we desire to walk in accuracy and perfection the fact that we are still evolving through transformation we will find ourselves defaulting not walking in perfect keeping with your principles and he's saying we are aware that you have created a provision in our dealing with you where your mercy would always prevail and he says that while we enjoy that reserve this in our consciousness that as we deal with people we will also meet people who are weak and limited that means when you pray effectively it leaves you with a responsibility also that the same way the father committed benevolence towards you you must be apt to communicate same to others forgive us our sins or trespasses for we also forgive all that are indebted to us and then it says lead us not into temptation King James did not do justice there because God does not tempt people with evil the Bible says it looks like he's saying lead us not into temptation he's saying build a garrison around us and refuse to allow us by any means get into anything that would tempt us for our destruction that's the original expression of it is not to lead like to woo you no god does not tempt any man with evil when he says lead us not into temptation he's saying create it is within your power to create a structure that defends us from moving into temptation he says nothing shall by any means hurt you you have to examine all the means that are available nothing shall by any means hurt you are we learning and then deliver us from evil then you read on so Jesus was helping them to understand the formation of prayer that you pray to your father you pray by faith you approach him with the spirit of reverence and then that when you are praying your focus listen carefully your focus should not just be your needs your focus should be that his kingdom would find expression in your life because in truth I tell you when the kingdom comes and finds expression in your life by his will being done 
you will still remain prayerful but you will hardly have prayer requests again because when the kingdom comes like one of my dear people will say it will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life so that at the end of your prayer life all that will be left is worship no more petitions because the kingdom has become the ultimate answer to those petitions are we blessed now let me just share with us and then we'll pray I've studied a bit on the subject of prayer and I found out that most believers really do not understand the purpose of prayer why is prayer such an important requirement to the believer why does God mandate us to pray why do we need to pray what is the assignment and the jurisdiction of the prayer ministry to the believer you see one of the ways that we gain stability in the kingdom is through understanding if I ask you for instance my dear people here if I ask you to sit down and just remain there as an instruction you will do it because you love me but you will be frustrated because there is no revelation that supports what you are doing it will become a burdensome ritual for you but if I ask you to sit down here because I've given someone a signal that when he comes whoever he finds sitting down here he should bless you the awareness of that revelation will give you the staying power to remain are we together now you understand what I'm saying so just merely telling people to pray will only make people loyal to a man of God or loyal to a religious sect but once you give them the revelation to see the necessity of prayer and the assignment of prayer let me tell you this it will surprise you to know this and I thank God that this is a ministry that is strong in revelation prayer is a major foundational key in this kingdom but it is not the only key I hope you know that by now Jesus said I will give you the keys of the kingdom so the prayer ministry has its jurisdiction and it has its assignment but prayer was so constructed I, I would always use this expression that when prayer is not the key it becomes the hand that holds the key so in any case you will still need to pray are we together but to just believe that prayer alone will solve all problems it may not be accurate because there are keys that are given in this kingdom are we together this auditorium has a number of doors as I can see just because you have the key to say the restroom does not mean you have the key to the office is that true if you need to use the restroom you'll be happy because you have the key that opens it but if you need to use the office then you are stranded although you are holding a key Africa being a very superstitious and religious con continent we have a lot of regard for prayer and we do all kinds of things that we call prayer and we expect prayer to evolve into any key we need to open many doors and sadly we stand stranded before doors because we only have one key um, I'm going to be teaching you on the assignment the jurisdiction of prayer but then I want you to understand in truth wisdom is a key relationship is a key prayer is a key are we together he when he gives you the keys of the kingdom then you handle these keys and you can open the various doors that need to be open as far as your life and your destiny is concerned but now since we're dealing with the subject of prayer I want to show you something very powerful that the Lord showed me um, from Scripture what is the assignment of prayer and what is the jurisdiction of prayer I found from Scripture that there are about four or five major assignments of prayer in the life of a believer let's run through them as we pray number one Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the first assignment of prayer and in order of priority this is about the most important assignment of the prayer ministry in the life of a believer transformation the real assignment of prayer in the life of a believer is not requests 
a means for obtaining request the primary assignment of the prayer ministry is the spiritual mechanism that evolves you to superior dimensions of yourself so you can evolve to a dimension of you that was not yesterday the weak you can become the strong you the timid you can become the powerful you the undiscerning and carnal you can become the spiritual you and the process midwifing that the former you and this new you is prayer it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings that he took Peter and John and James and the Bible says he went into a mountain to pray are we together now verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed are you observing this the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering through prayer this is what prayer achieves in the life of a believer transformation that happens through prayer believe me no matter what is wrong with your life subject yourself constructively to the ministry of prayer and watch yourself evolve into levels that will surprise you i have seen weak people become strong through consistent prayer i've seen people without discernment grow into certain appreciable levels of handling the gifts of the spirit and that's through prayer everybody say transformation yes. transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience it's called transformation the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. You can pray wrong things out of your life. You can pray the virtue of the spirit to be at work in your life. Number two, why do we pray? Prayer is the authorized platform as revealed from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises. That every time you desire to make requests and to obtain promises, the authorized, the scriptural platform to make this happen is prayer. Mark 11 and verse 24. Jesus was teaching on the subject of faith. Then he said this, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when, not if ye pray. In prayer, it says, believe that thou receivest them. So we receive in prayer, and then you shall have it. I'm sure that you know that there is a difference between receiving and having. You only have what you have received. You cannot have what you have not received. Receiving is a spiritual reality. And then having is the physical manifestation. You only have what you have received. Are we together? Very important. The Bible says when you pray, among the many things that should happen in your prayer is that you receive. Everything God has given, you receive in prayer and then you can have it. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7 gives us the biblical cure for anxiety it says be anxious the word there is not careful the word there is anxious be anxious for nothing he says but in everything that means the prayer ministry covers every aspect of your life there is no aspect of your life that prayer cannot cover in everything he says by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known have you read that in your bible he never said to assume that god knows let your request let the rent issue let the family issue let the issue in your job be made known unto god be anxious for nothing he says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known next verse and the peace of god this is one of the ways god answers prayers peace is a voice when he speaks his answer comes in peace he
he will speak peace to his people he says the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through jesus christ so we see that the second assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is to make requests and to obtain promises number three why do we pray what is the purpose of prayer in the life of the believer are you ready for decrease and for creation hmm. prayer is the scriptural platform that gives the believer an opportunity to make decrease and to create possibilities in your life that it is possible to make to be what was not through the power of decrease and that in prayer this is very very powerful job chapter 22 and verse 28 job 22 and verse 28 it says that you will also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you who is the you the one who made the decree not the one who needs the result the one who made the decree you shall also declare a thing and it shall be established unto you so light will shine on your ways numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 1 4 and then 28 say unto them as i leave saith the lord just as you have spoken in my hearing so will i do unto you just as you have spoken just as you have spoken can i tell you it is not only god you speak to you speak to things in prayer the character of faith according to the pauline revelation is that is in the similitude of how god behaves and that he can call things to be that were not he can call things and make things to appear that were not decrease and creation I hope you realize that creation has not stopped you would not be an effective Christian to believe that creation has stopped mm -mm. the fact that God rested does not mean creation stopped we can make things to appear that is not my goodness this is powerful we can make things to appear that is not we can call things we can call realms we can call dimensions we can call possibilities that is not yet within your space you don't need to look for them what you are looking for is also looking for you you just need to know how to call it to you hallelujah in prayer you can make decrees in prayer you can create possibilities right from where you are you can create a life of beauty and a life of glory in prayer this is very powerful it's an advantage that puts everybody at the same position that regardless my limitations territorially regardless my limitations by reason of my background the prayer ministry if understood can veto those limitations and call into my life something i was not born with and call into my life something my certificate did not carry i can call possibilities into my life you have to believe this so there is no need you see this was what apostle james was teaching and we'll wrap up with that one he said from whence come wars and rumors of wars and all of these things he says it comes from the loss that is in your heart it comes as a token of the frustration you have for not having results and he said it is unnecessary because everyone can ask and receive so there is no need to be jealous there is no need to be angry at another man's result there is a possibility to also attract same to your life hallelujah Even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not. Hold on. He never said the things that do not exist. Be not means it's not within your frame of sight. 
every single bone from the army that disintegrated in Ezekiel 37 was still there but it was just scattered beyond the scope of sight under a certain condition it came back not every condition listen to me under a certain condition everything can come your assignment is to use prophetic words to direct your results and your answers to your place when you make decrees listen carefully when you make decrees and you create possibilities and the raw material for that creation is the word of god remember the bible says john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the bible says the same was with god in the beginning and then verse 3 says that all things how many things all things it didn't say all spiritual things it says all things that means the unit of every physical material is not an atom it is the word of god science has only exhausted itself all things were made by him and he said without him without him means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made so I can call to my life when you look at me all you see is not all there is there are some things coming there are some things coming and it is not only things you call you can call realms you can call dimensions you can call spiritual qualities to come to your life believe me this is true you can call the ministry of men to your life the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the king sent with his word he didn't need to find out where joseph was he sent and they brought him out of his dungeon if the king sent for joseph there are things you need to send for listen 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 when jesus needed to have a triumphant entry he could not go at that state and he gave an instruction he said go to a city whose road divide you will find something there that is for me lose it and let it come and if they ask you what is your audacity tell them the king had need of it there are things you have need of for your triumphant entry and you must learn how to call it forth and let it be loosed and come to you if they ask you tell them the king had need of it I hope you believe what you are hearing yes. how do you think ordinary men rise there are no guarantees in life nobody gives you a guarantee as a man of God that I will come to your church nobody gives you a guarantee that I will help you vain is the help of a man if God does not instruct them can I tell you waiting for things to just happen by default will recycle pain in your life you can call things everything has an ear biology misled us even though we respect it to say there are living and non-living things interesting everything is alive it depends on who is speaking everything is alive it depends on who is speaking there were other people who spoke and the bones were quiet but the prophet said I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound you can call forth health you can call forth resources you can call forth all kinds of things you can call forth ravens from wherever they are to come and meet you at Brook Cherith listen when you know this your prayer life becomes exciting because it is sponsored by an understanding 
lose that cold and if they ask you because someone will ask you based on what is this result coming your reply should be the king had need of it he said when I sent you lackest thou anything are we learning let's finish up to pray in fact let me stop here and just show us three hindrances to effective prayer based on the revelation that apostle james gave us let's just look at it quickly and then we'll pray apostle james began to teach us in james chapter 4 please pay attention now james chapter 4 and verse 3 james 4 and verse 3 let's start from verse 1 for sake of um, clarity now here's what he's saying apostle james is teaching us on prayer from whence come wars and fightings among you he's challenging wars fightings and all of these things he says come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members the word lost there in this context is not a demonic thing or a satanic thing the, the word there simply desires that there is you have a desire a craving for something you want to see certain things happen in your life because you see psychologically speaking one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress to the degree to which you perceive you are moving forward you will find fulfillment if at any point you find yourself stagnated it has an effect on you so he's saying from whence come your frustrations and all of that is it not among the lost that war in your members verse 2 ye lost desire now and have not and your desperation even gets you to a point where you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war yet ye have not simply because ye ask not he's saying there is no reason to fight there is no reason to covet and be angry at another person's testimony it's unnecessary it's, it's an insult to the benevolence of god he's saying when you hear that god is doing something there's no reason being angry as if it was only one left and it was given to another he said the only reason why you do not have is that you do not ask then verse 3 he now begins to give us the template for effective prayer and what to guard against he says ye ask so there are people who have done the asking and yet receive not he teaches us that it is possible in your prayer life to ask and yet not receive and he tells you why he says because ye ask amiss everyone say amiss he uses a very interesting word amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust one more scripture and then i'll build together what he has said a miss there means with wrong motives that means your motive is already corrupted for desiring it are we together even though you are asking but hidden within your heart is a corrupted motive james chapter 1 same james chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 james chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 Here's what he says. He's dealing with the issue of lack and how to want every time you lack. If any of you lack, not just wisdom, he's teaching on lack. How to get when, the mo when you find out that, that you are in lack. If any of you lack, he says the cure for lack is to ask of God. He was speaking with respect to wisdom, but it is not limited to wisdom if any of you lack wisdom he says let him ask of god that giveth unto how many men and how much does he give god gives to all men and he gives liberally and upbraided not he says and it shall be given to him verse 6 reading to 7 he says but let him ask in faith this is another condition nothing wavering for he that wavereth 
is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed seven serious tragedy here for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord so Apostle James gives us three reasons why prayers are not answered number one asking amiss you know what it means to ask amiss to ask amiss means to ask outside of the provision of his will to ask without a scriptural backing this is where ineffective prayer comes most people just pray superstitious prayers most believers pray communicating lamentations and just because they've dissipated energy in praying amiss they believe that because of the time they will be heard to ask amiss means to pray outside of his will he said this is the confidence that we have apostle john now was teaching us that when we ask anything in accordance to his will he hears us his will means his word listen to me wordless prayer is prayer that is unanswered god is touched by the feelings of our infirmity but he responds only to his word you have to understand this there are no sentiments when it has to do with exalting the word of god because he has exalted the word even above his office he chose to submit to the word so when you pray an emotional prayer it will only comfort you because you are expressing your pain but there is no answer guaranteed from scripture the first assignment of a believer therefore in approaching prayer is knowledge not praying knowledge so that the things you are asking for will be in accordance to the will of god the guarantee that god will answer you is that you are praying consistent with scripture most believers do not pray in accordance to scripture most believers i can tell you this for free most with all due respect and honor most ministries do not pray approaching the prayer ministry with intention and with spiritual intelligence derived from scripture and so we find out that we keep saying a lot of things and dissipating energy and we hardly receive answers to prayer the margin of energy that is dissipated in prayer versus the result that comes is so small and it's not motivating enough this was the frustration of the disciples teach us to pray there's something about our prayer life we can't keep shouting and yelling and rolling around and like as though we are the prophets of Baal there is something about the accuracy of your prayer that for every time you dissipate energy there are results that justify it can I tell you the truth I believe that is in the heart of your man of God that for every time you come here praying that by the next time even if it's morning and night the distance between morning and night you should return with strange results that you stand here and say what happened I don't I, I know I said this in the morning and by evening God has taken five months and put it in one day can I tell you every time you receive real results you become too grateful to be quiet the greatest motivation for evangelism is personal results read your bible the madman in gadara the woman at the well every time people obtain genuine personal results they were too grateful even when they were instructed don't tell anybody how do I hide that God lifted me? How do I hide that I've entered another realm? How do I hide that the favor of God is upon me? Can that be hidden? Evangelism was supposed to be a byproduct of consistent results in the life of the believer. Let me repeat. Evangelism was designed by the intelligence of God to be a byproduct of consistent result your audacity in inviting people is based on your personal testimony come see a man who had told me it's not a suggestion come see a man i'm i'm calling you with a guarantee 
and when they came to Jesus they came because the woman asked them to come but when they encountered him they said now we believe not just because you brought us paraphrasing we have seen him for ourselves I'm agreeing with your man of God in prayer that beginning from tonight that you will shift to another dimension of results in the name of Jesus Christ can I tell you do not downplay the power of results do not downplay the power of results the end of any argument is results results that are derived from scripture because how they come is also how they are maintained are we together praying a miss means to pray without a scriptural backing without faith with wrong motives that in approaching prayer you must approach prayer knowing this that if i pray with a wrong motive a motive that does not seek to bring glory to the lord through that result it is within the power of god based on my motive as an act of his mercy to deny me that answer it is not every denial to answer that is demonic or satanic there are many prayers that are not answered because god loves you he's not answering the prayer is proof that he's determined that you grow because an heir the bible says for as long as he's a child that he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all no matter how you love your child you will not take the key to your car and give a six seven year old child so there are certain times that prayers answers to prayers are withheld and god accelerates your maturity to gain the stature that can have that because you see there are certain results that when god gives you in your life he must train you on how to maintain them it will bring attacks it will bring jealousy you must be fortified with the spiritual understanding to maintain certain realms of results before it comes when god suddenly gives you a hundred million or one billion naira you will be surprised at the attacks that had no business coming to you that will fish you out wherever you are because of what has happened you don't need to look for anybody's trouble we are living in the world of men the whole world lies in wickedness so before god will commit that dimension of wealth to you he will have to train you to know how to put the full armor of god so that you can withstand all the wiles of darkness are we together there are people who God gave one million and we didn't see them in church again. They ran away, did all kinds of things until it finished and then they run back because you see every time you forget your source, remember Abba, the prodigal son for as long as he was with his father, there was no lack. The day he left, lack began. He depleted until he was eaten with swine. He said how many hired servants as my father and i'm here feeding with the swine he says i will arise and i will go back to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the moment he met his father there was restoration the signet ring was put on him again the robe of royalty came upon him and a fatted calf was killed for him hallelujah we are going to pray. And in this moment of prayer, I'm going to challenge us to take seriously our time of prayer. We are going to pray in the Spirit. And as we pray, pray with this understanding that in prayer, you are evolving. You are evolving. You know how a snake molts? There's something called molting. When a snake wants to leave its former self into a newer self, it will subject itself through the process of molting. It will shed off the old skin. So when you look at the size of the old skin, that is no longer the size of the new snake. That is the former self. The confused you can pray into the circumspect you the weak you can pray into the strong you the favorless you 
can pray into the you that has favor like Jabez you can pray oh that thou wouldest bless me the Bible says the mother cursed him she named him after her pain because I bore you in sorrow but he came to a point where he had to change that narrative he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray I can tell you stories of what the prayer ministry has done in my life hmm. let me tell you a little story pastor sir when the Lord asked me to come to Abuja from Zaria I I fought with God for years because I said Lord I don't want I'm not sure that I'm ready for this let me just remain there in peace I'm not I'm not sure that I want to come and do ministry in Abuja I understand how expensive the life is the complexity of I'm I don't I'm not ready for all of these stories I just want to remain there to serve the Lord peacefully finally when I came I remember just looking around and saying where in the world do you start from and then I remembered that in prayer we can make manifest the things that are not listen carefully the Lord gave me an instruction to go and get the map of Abuja the map of Nigeria the map of Africa and the map of the world this four and for a period of six months gratefully for the pandemic I looked at the local governments and I found out there were six local governments in this city and I laid my hands and I began to pray and I remember a time came in prayer I don't know what it is that happened to me Abuja became small I, I don't mean to be arrogant I, I, you understand I sincerely have, I looked at it and it suddenly you know how like you are looking at a child playing I said what is the population in this city and it suddenly became small building up yourselves on your most holy faith prayer with power deflates challenges because every challenge comes in its magnified form it takes a prayer ministry to deflate it to its true size it is the character of Satan to magnify simple things and make it how will I get this one billion how will I get this how will this happen when I looked at it I said this is it this is not this is not there was something that he did to my mind and it was in prayer laying my hands and speaking and I said Lord now I agree with you and the rest to God be the glory so I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables my dear people every man you see who God has helped and shown mercy with any kind of exploit it didn't just come just by dressing and speaking English no your prayer ministry is your control room where you play life like a chess when everything is done from there then you come out and you begin to watch things gravitate with a charm like quality towards you and you are wondering what is all this everybody to help you believe me based on the intelligence we get from scripture is within your vicinity help us don't just come they are called you can pass them every day and they do not even know the Bible says there were many widows in Zarephath that means Elijah passed some but there was a woman only God knows what that woman was doing don't assume he just went to her God cannot isolate one widow out of so many and send a prophet to her
Hallelujah. Sometimes when we, you see, it's good to give testimonies, but sometimes testimonies can be misunderstood. That's why most times men of God just keep quiet and they don't want to say things because people misunderstand it for pride and all of these things. But I can tell you this, if you understand the ministry of word-based prophetic prayer, you will change your life like night and day. You will marvel and wonder. Listen, for some of you right now, in all honesty, it may be that nothing physical has happened in your life and you are spending your time praying with intelligence and someone asks you, what do you do for a living? And you say nothing. Think again. Nothing? You spend time praying and they ask you, what do you do? And you say nothing. <laughs> nothing? What do you have in your house? She said, nothing except. When you spend time praying and calling for things, let me tell you, you did the same thing and better than an engineer who is working with a construction company was doing because that's exactly what you were doing you spent your day building and creating something that is about to manifest i hope you know that everything is built twice it is first built in the realm of the spirit and then it manifests so the next time you spend time praying and you say nothing think again i'm saying this because we're about to pray and as you pray in the spirit and as you stretch in the spirit i want you to use your imagination because there are two prayer warriors one is you the other is your mind they are all prayer warriors and god answers both he says now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask and think your thinking is praying too so don't just use your mouth and keep your brain your mouth can be saying, Lord, bring this blessing. And your thinking is saying, God, forget about it. You will answer both. Your mouth and your thinking must be effective prayer warriors. Your mind must participate in your prayer. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all his commandments which I command you this day. It says that the Lord your God will exalt you above all the nations. How many nations? All the nations. This is not a parable. It was a literal statement. When I read the Bible, I believe it. I truly believe it. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. Listen. As it rises on us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us. Right from where you are, you can lift up your eyes. And begin to see the possibilities that are contained in scripture a life of dignity and honor and glory a life that is invincible results like chariots following you the good hand of God and his mercy upon your life it is from that standpoint you approach Abba in prayer and then now the Bible gives us the advantage in the person of the Holy Spirit. He says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. I will not leave you comfortless, he says. I will send one who will walk with you in this journey. For the Bible says, we have a limitation. And the limitation, he calls it our infirmity in Romans chapter 8. He says, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. That means he, God recognizes the fact that our growth is gradual. But there are things you need now. You may not have all the knowledge banked to, to engage effectively. The Holy Ghost comes 
as an advocate as an intercessor who can pray the will of the father accurately through you the bible calls him a helper and that he can help our infirmity the word infirmity there is not sickness it is the limitations that come by reason of wearing a mortal body are you ready to pray we're going to take a few minutes and please give your destiny an undivided attention as you pray do not allow the devil distract you forget about whatever bills whatever issues and let us join in prayer the fervent effectual prayer there is such a description to prayer as fervent and effectual of the righteous man availed much are you ready to pray please open your mouth and begin to pray whatever position you find comfortable just make sure you pray just make sure you pray Shalima Rasko Branda Katapratike de Belekatosia. Shapakatosa da Brandege de Balakosia Tabalandasia. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Mante Kaparataska de Brateke Lekatosia Tabahashia. Zapraskate raska da balanta barandeska de baliata. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Balanda salakata breska di la caparuese. Ebreke de beleka tos kati branda shadaka da balaka tos. Pray, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, and defieth himself, and defieth himself. Shana makata paratas kata branda ge barato shiata. Ebra kosh kati la parianda breske di balasi ada bakatosh. Shima neka te baria katosh. Leka te branda skate laka praska di barakoshia kate branding. Shadi baraka tapanda brata kasko te balaka tosh. Imbraka tus katira sabalaka ta. Leke pros, leke te brandos koto brate ko shige de belege da. Shibenia shabarata kata branda kata balaka tosia. Imbreke te parus kati laka parus ya tege de belege tosh. Shana meleke te brandos kata branda kata paro kata shake te. Imbraka tos koto brandos kote leke te branda kata balaka tos. Shemanda kata prosko to balika prada da kapalia da balagatos. Shade baka paratos kani bande prada gade balagatos. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Now listen carefully, please. We are praying now. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus was teaching and he made a very profound statement. He called Satan the thief. He says, The thief cometh not except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Are we together? So he reveals to us that Satan can steal, Satan can kill, and Satan can destroy. Now let me connect it to a mystery and then we'll pray. In Matthew chapter 21, please, give us verse 13. Matthew 21 and verse 13. This was when Jesus came into the temple. When he came into the temple, the Bible says he met people doing business within the temple is that true 
they were exchanging in the temple and he was angry and the bible says he began to whip them there were a few people there called money changers their job was to exchange you would bring something and they would exchange all that was happening in the temple so when jesus came he threw everything down and he made a statement that will be our prayer point now he said my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves listen carefully do you know what he's saying he's saying at every point his house is one of two things either a house of prayer or a place where thieves are carrying out exchanges and that house is you you that temple of the holy ghost he said at every point in your life you are either a house of prayer or there are exchanges going through in your life my house shall be called a house a temple of prayer failure to be a temple of prayer it was lack of prayer in the temple that gave access for exchangers exchangers of destiny exchangers of all kinds of things is someone ready to pray i like you to pray and find that house back to a place of prayer my house this temple is a house of prayer that means the ministry of the thief should not find expression in my house the ministry of sickness and infirmity should not find expression in me because this house is a house of prayer pray pray let it be from the depth of your heart my house shall be called a house of prayer satan you have no authority to steal from this house to kill from this house to destroy this house because it is a house of prayer hallelujah hallelujah listen i want you to believe in this prayer that you are praying you are not wasting your time something is happening to you acts chapter 28 acts chapter 28 in jesus name now please listen let me establish another prayer point in acts chapter 28 when you read from verse 1 and down to 6 the bible says when paul had escaped the storm remember an angel appeared to him and he told them there shall be no loss and the bible says they went safely and arrived at an island called melita now verse 2 28 verse 2 the bible says when the locals he calls them the barbarians the people showed them kindness watch this now paul was about to reveal something that the people did not have the discernment to see the bible says there was a viper hiding in the wood a viper a venomous snake that could it it could it could bite you and even kill you how did it hide that those who brought down the wood did not see it and they put everything together and while they sat down there as soon as the wood was on fire the viper that was hiding there suddenly became exposed if fire was not there the viper will still hide in the wood and you will not know that you are living with an enemy but as soon as fire was lit the fire exposed the viper listen can i tell you i know this about the prayer ministry 
there are things that you may never understand occurrences and happenings of demon spirits it takes generating energy in the spirit and suddenly you will begin to see that the things you could not understand are now making sense what, what, why, why am I receiving all these assaults from the place of work what is this when my promotion is coming in the place of prayer fire can expose the viper fire can expose the viper lift your voice and pray pray with this understanding that everything that attempts to impede the purposes of God in my life by the power of the Holy Ghost the fire that comes in this prayer the fire expose the viper the fire expose the cause of your pain the fire expose the cause of the delays the fire expose the cause of the disfavor the fire expose the cause of the antagonisms Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Shabra katos koto brende gata. Lekete braske de shekete bere kotos. Embre ketos. Eka shekete bere tos keni atakasa. of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus is God helping us Matthew chapter 12 from verse 43 Jesus taught us a very deep mystery Jesus was teaching on the activity of spirits and he said when an unclean spirit listen carefully is gone out of a man that it walked through dry places seeking rest and finding none next verse the bible says then it will say i will return to what the man is free but as far as the spirit is concerned it is his house and he says i will return to my house from whence i came out and when he is come he will find it empty he will find it swept he will find it garnished last verse the bible says he goeth and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they will enter in and dwell there and the last state of the man is worse than let me explain something to you listen it takes a man anointed by God with spiritual understanding to cast out a demon out of another do we agree on that and then the Bible tells us something serious that that spirit goes to the desert and when it goes to the desert where there is no man to cast it by itself there is a condition in the desert that makes that spirit uncomfortable and it will prefer to come back and fight with that man a desert is a place of extreme heat and that when that spirit goes to that place in the presence of that extreme heat the spirit by itself with no one to cast it becomes uncomfortable that means when your body becomes like that desert when your life becomes like that desert that the spirit becomes uncomfortable because the desert is a place of heat the bible says he maketh his ministers his angels can i tell you this listen 
you don't know how cheap Satan is until you pray Satan is as powerful as your prayerlessness makes him become that a spirit in a human body will require a man anointed by the Holy Ghost to get it out but it goes to a desert where there's no preacher no keyboard no drums no choir no protocol the heat in the desert will cast it back and it will come to stay in someone else that means when you become in the similitude of the heat of that desert your life and everything around you becomes a no-go zone for any operation of demon spirits is someone ready to pray you are praying with this understanding that I am praying to become in experience a flame of fire lift your voice and pray a flame of fire a flame of fire a flame of fire Seneca Paroto Soto Koto Mariata a flame of fire a flame of fire Don't be tired. Make sure you're praying. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Very powerful scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Is it projected? Can you see it? Can we read it together? One, two, read. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Hold on. Wherefore, your favor would have arrived since. Wherefore, your lifting. Wherefore, your destiny helper would have arrived. He said, I tried once and again. But Satan, listen, I understand this scripture very, very well. Let me tell you a story and then we'll pray. Sir, I don't know how many years now, I was praying one night, true story, and then my my ceiling suddenly disappeared in that vision and then i'm seeing this creature and it is looking at me having eyes that are as big as a human head i'm not exaggerating it looked like a dinosaur and it was looking at me red eyes and then it had a tail the tail had its own life you could detach it and it would still be alive and he was looking at me with fierce anger and he made a statement he says so you think you can bring God's people into abundance that was a statement but Satan hindered us you will you will be amazed to know how many things would have been easy for you But Satan hindered us. Now listen, let me tell you this. Even though it happened with Jesus, I want to explain something to you. Hmm. The centurion in one of the synoptic accounts pleaded with Jesus to come and rescue their child from dying. Remember that story? While Jesus was on his way going, another woman interrupted him and said please I have an issue of blood and he focused and was dealing 
with her issue by the time he was done in one of the synoptic accounts they said this other person had died timing matters in destiny hear me it was the delay of the bridegroom that made the five other virgins if the bridegroom came early all the ten they were all virgins the delay of the bridegroom made the oil of the five they all started well but the bridegroom was late I want you to pray with understanding that every hindrance I desire to come to you once and again only God knows how many things in Abuja have been authorized by prophecy to come to you they have tried they tried in 2019 they tried in 2020 lift your voice and pray with understanding I clear away every hindrance by the blood of the Lamb open doors that should have come lift things that should have come answers to prayer that should have come Alike paruska te brante ke toska dia da box. E brante te kotos koto brante ke tele katos. Shames konde brante katos kiata. Se te brante ke di bash. de breketo proskoto maria tabada doshane e breketo skoto prato skoto prende kete ba e prakato sopro sosi kete legot makata prende ke perusiata e kreto skoto shoto prende kete ba retos soon round up you will marvel and wonder the results you will get from this prayer believe me now listen once upon a time in Bible days there was a criminal called Barabbas listen carefully many of you will be surprised the reason and the explanation for disfavor around your life there was a criminal called Barabbas who had been troubling the people and they apprehended him and, and kept him and then one time when they caught Jesus also listen to me Pontius Pilate brought Jesus to stand and brought Barabbas to stand and they asked the people who do you want to be crucified and who should be released there was a spirit that came upon the people and they looked at Jesus and said this is the one to crucify and release the criminal how do you in your right mind release a criminal so don't be surprised that there can be four people in the office who are supposed to be promoted and in spite of your capacity that there is an orchestration of darkness where good can be called evil and evil can be called good he said do not allow your good to be evil spoken of that means if you keep quiet and you don't pray you can be doing good but a perception can come on your good and it will be seen as evil are you ready to pray open your mouth and decree and declare my good will be rewarded as good my good will never be evil spoken of Barabbas should never be released a criminal in the stead of a righteous man 
Shana zeke soto paruta. Ebra katosha teleke tosko to prendegeta. Ekre tosko tosko to pegeta. Maka baronto shono manakata pregetish. Please pray. your good be evil spoken of. Do not let your good be evil spoken of. O oh man of God, O oh businessman, O oh career person, contend in prayer. Do not allow your good to be misrepresented. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me show you a mystery. In Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1, the Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Help me finish that scripture. And the Lord had blessed him in how many things? So God is able to grant rest round about. Now please come with me to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts 16. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25. Acts 16 from verse 25. Now when you begin to read contextually, you will see that Paul casted a demon out of a lady who brought gain for her masters by divination. Is that true? On account of that miracle, it boomeranged on them and they, they now took them and kept them in prison. But there's something I want to show now. A prison is a place of confinement. It's a place of limitation. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly there was a great earthquake hallelujah so that the foundations of the prison were shaken please read the next sentence everyone and immediately all doors how many doors how many doors immediately once there was an earthquake all doors financial doors open all doors open a god can give a man rest round about he says all doors open all doors open listen when you read second kings chapter 5 will not turn there for sake of time the bible says naaman there was a man called Naaman. He was the captain of the Syrian army, he says. He said he was a valiant man in war, but he was leprous. Thank God for the areas you have gotten results, but for the sake of one other area, you must insist in prayer that in this year, all doors open. Lift your voice and pray. All doors, all doors, all doors. All doors, kabarosh kete pekatos, embra katosh koto prente kote sekete. All doors, in the marvelous name of Jesus. All doors, all doors, open. All doors, doors of favor, open. All doors, doors of speed, open. Open in the name of Jesus. All doors open. 
doors of jobs open, doors of relationships open, doors of fruitfulness open. Hallelujah. 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 We're wrapping up. Please do not forget what I want to share with you now. Please look up. Let me establish probably the last prayer point or so. The gospel, the gospel that we, that we preach has two sides to it. There is the message that saves. That is the first dimension of the gospel, the message that saves. And the key to propagating that message is evangelism. Are we together? But there is the second dimension to it, the ideology that transforms society. So there are two sides to the gospel. There is the message that saves. There is the ideology that transforms society. The key to advancing the message is called evangelism. But the key to advancing the ideology is called influence. I'm establishing my prayer request now my prayer point so for you to completely preach the gospel you need to embrace the message that saves that deals with you personal salvation but territorial salvation is the mindset that is introduced into systems and structures that enthrones Christ are we together now if you focus only on the message that saves you will be saved as an individual but your territory will frustrate your Christian experience an example was Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah Lot was a righteous man as a person but he was among a people who were depraved and he could not find expression so there are two keys to kingdom advance number one is evangelism number two is influence Satan has a primary assignment to stop both but if for any reason he can't do anything about your receiving Jesus now your personal salvation is a done deal the next place of attack is your influence what is influence influence is the capacity to cause men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty Territories can be changed overnight with the power of influence. Cultures are shaped through influence. The Bible says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Can I tell you, most people downplay the power of influence. At every point in your life, someone is influencing you. And you are to bring the influence of the kingdom. Satan will fight influence in any way he can I want to show you a scripture because the gates of influence is about to open for someone are we together in Isaiah chapter 60 when you read from verse 1 to 3 it says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you I would like to quote this many times from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. It says, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Listen carefully. Verse 2 says, for darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen in you. Verse 3 influence gentiles all nations shall come not to you to your light and even their arrogant kings their kings already have results they won't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising are we together the end time church is going to advance the frontiers of the kingdom not only through evangelism and discipleship but it will come through influence
Acts chapter 12. Oh, someone's life is changing. Acts chapter 12 from verse 1. Please do not forget this scripture and this revelation. Now watch this. You know that the disciples of Jesus, I want to show you how Satan fights influence. You know the disciples of Jesus were in different levels. There was the 70 or 72. He had the 12, but there were three people there were things that they saw the rest did not see and satan marked every one of them he started by beheading james it was peter james and john the threefold cord that cannot be easily, easily broken when he found james and they beheaded him he went straight to paul the bible says they killed james and he saw that it pleased the jews and he went straight to peter during the days of the unleavened bread be patient let's read the bible says when he had apprehended peter he put him in where prison what was he fighting he put him in prison you would think that would be enough but then he brought four quaternions of soldiers to still keep him in prison it was not just confinement he wanted for eight soldiers again covered him intending after easter to bring him forth before the people verse 5 the bible says peter therefore was kept in prison please help me finish the remaining part of that sentence but prayer was made this was what was not done for james unfortunately there is no record that they stood in for James and James died but when Peter was there the church said no way there is something we can do please keep it there we're still reading the Bible says prayers was made without season of the church unto God for him the result verse 6 the Bible says and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains Abba you lock a man in prison tie him with chains and put eight soldiers that's not a fight for liberty is influence and the Bible says that the keepers were there before the door who kept the prison verse 7 and behold the angel of the Lord came in response to prayer listen and a light shined in that prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell from his hands verse 8 the Bible says the angel said guard yourself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 and when he went out listen carefully he followed him and wished not that which was true which was done by the angel but he thought he saw a vision now verse 10 the bible says he held peter the angel and they passed the first and second word or gate watch this now they passed the first gate he was no longer in prison but he was still confined they passed the second gate far from the prison but still no liberty and the Bible says and they came to the iron gate which leaded to where so there is a gate that leads to the city every man's city is his place of influence did the Bible not say you are listen there is a gate that leads to the city when that gate opens the city must see you for who you are and now begin to place a demand the iron gate that leads to the city businessmen hear me you can be in a city and yet spiritually you are not there because there are gates that must open I understand what I'm telling you 
listen in Zaria one time there are few only few people here that really understand you know that may know Zaria the Lord asked me to trek from a place quite far in town and to trek down to a place called aviation and I was trekking and just speaking over that territory because there are spirits that reside over that place I know what it means for the tulip gates of a city to be opened can I tell you you can be doing I've seen many gifted people sir anointed and sincere but the gates that leads to the city has not been opened I've seen business people who cannot understand preachers sincere love God anointed but the two leaf gates in ancient times you would never come into a city until the gate is open is that true every city spiritually has gates just because you move there physically does not mean the gate is open there is a protocol to influence now watch this the first gate opened the second gate opened and the Bible says this very gate was called the iron gate and my Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in Sunday when Jesus prophetically in Psalm 24 was returning back to the land of the living there was a cry lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors hold on those doors have been there for a long time they are used to closing over people and the gates replied who is this king of glory can I tell you this listen for a few of you who may have seen the posters that and I'm saying this respectfully of my coming into the city when I was praying that map of Abuja or something there's one I, I, I don't I still don't know the names of your cities you won't believe it cities is city gates there's one map there like that that was what I saw in my vision that was why I told them to put it in the you know the the billboard or whatever it is because you see let me tell you sincerely spiritually speaking gates have seen sit um, um cities have gates you want to understand this properly go to the north you won't get it very well around the south you go to the north you see the entrance of every major place you see that now the gates do not have anything closing them but you enter and believe you are in you the city will show you you are not invited There are many business people in Abuja. You see, the Bible says they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalms 82 and now verse 5. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. The tragedy is verse 7. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. It takes high level spiritual illumination to be able to command authority even in prayer. The foundation for effective prayer is access to the mysteries of the kingdom so that you pray in keeping with the will of God. You can know your prayer will be answered. Your intelligence is consistent with scripture. You are not praying amiss. The iron gate that opens to the city can I tell you this some of you here are business people some of you here have schools you're running some of you here might be other ministers who came that there is a gate that has to open but when that gate opens you will marvel and wonder the Bible says Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 people you would think he did, he did not know where they were hiding. He just, there was a shofar. Can I tell you, there is an anointing called the hear ye him anointing. 
people don't just listen to you because you have something to say it takes more than that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased creation was given an instruction hear ye him when that grace comes on your business right from where you are when it comes upon the works of your hands I'm saying this because we're about to pray that that gate in the name of Jesus Christ must be opened hither and thither because the king of glory wants to make a triumphant entry are you ready to pray lift your voice and decree and declare gates a fata be open gates a fata hita and tita be open gates be open Gates be open. Mande balako shadi kete predi kete la pasi. The iron gate be broken, be open. Gates of influence, the gates that leads to the city, be open, be open. The King of Glory desires to come in. Be open. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you now. You have done the praying. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be adored. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the I want you to be very sensitive now. You have prayed. Let me pray for you. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Sir, ordinarily I would have told you this maybe privately in the office, but the Lord is asking me to say it in the open. I just saw a vision and I saw you and your wife, and I saw it was like two ships, 
and you were walking and you had gotten to the end of one sheep and I saw a hand stretched and it held you to another sheep and it began to move. I believe, I, no, please stand, sir. I believe that another phase of ministry, you hear what I'm saying, go and write it down. In addition to what you are currently doing, another strange apostolic and, di and prophetic dimension of ministry is opening because this instruction to pray for a long time there are many things that God has not said yet that by by the end of it he will tell why he called for a fast like this just believe me that this fasting is midwifing one season into another that's why God is saying I should say it openly so that the day he tells you they will know that it's not you that just said it that's why I'm saying it in the open ordinarily I may just go and tell him in the office I saw a hand like a sheep sheep and just held him and another season so don't you be surprised what will come out by revelation in the course of this fasting do not think it is the flesh but hear me it is another dimension of ministry this is true it is another dimension of ministry and there are three very strong anointings that will in multiplied dimensions would start working in the life of this man and his wife number one is the teaching grace number two is the healing grace number three is the prophetic grace these three graces in strong dimensions you would begin to see testimonies and manifestations of the hand of God this word would not fail it will happen by the Spirit the second thing I want to say and I apologize again God is asking me to say it and I'm saying it in the open your membership have not yet come the people you are raising are leaders by the time the leaders are raised it will be like an inferno of fire the kind of training you are giving these people is not for membership there is a strengthening they are building capacity because the oil stops when there is no more vessel and so he's listen many of you here you think you are just members of a ministry you are the leaders he's building capacity when he's done it was when the ark was ready that the animals started coming they don't come to wait until the ark i'm speaking this by prophecy an ark of three stories of gopher wood is being built even in this ministry and with this man and when that ark is done the same grace that brought the animals on their own they came two by two and seven by seven they will come by the spirit it will be a wonder to behold what God can do with a man who hears him give Jesus praise now I want to pray for you do you believe in the power of God second Corinthians please stand sir please second Corinthians 9 and verse 8 listen after tonight you must do well to go and invite everybody you know look at what I mean as you are here I'm sure some of you is paining you right now that my loved ones should be here I was glad when they said unto me let us go not let me go let us go is wrong when you are going alone it is let us go anything that is godly is always let us let us make let us go and God is able to make all grace not some grace grace is in dimensions God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in how many things may abound unto every good work let me explain this scripture that means God is able to coordinate every grace you need and to bring it within your reach this scripture is based on the principle that what is on you is what controls what is around you 
your results are a report card telling us what is on you or not on you thou anointest my head with oil not my cup it is my head that is anointed but I know the size of what is on my head by looking at my cup if my cup is overflowing it means what is on me is overflowing so the physical results in your life are attestations to the grace the kind and the level of grace that you carry are we together you can know that the grace that is upon you has multiplied by the results that change you can know what kind of grace you carry by the testimonies that recycle around your life there are receipts when they change something changed are we together meetings like this by the Spirit of God leads us to pray but then it gives us an opportunity to be able to take something upon our heads that we did not come to church with you can carry something that you did not come with the Bible says when the donkey of Kish was missing they went three days this young man called Saul hmm. and after three days when they did not find it he said let's return back he said no we've left too much there is a seer let us go to that man the word of the Lord does not fail and as soon as they saw Samuel I was so blessed when your man of God made a profound statement he said God's strategy is man it's not a lie when the devil wants to destroy you he introduces a man when God wants to help you he introduces a man in any case it will still be by the ministry of man are we together we are nothing on our own except for the graces that we carry listen the grace of God is a mysterious advantage when it comes upon a man with understanding it can turn the narrative of your destiny in one day when they met Samuel look at a problem that was costing them so much difficulty but as soon as they met a man look at how he trivialized that problem Samuel said no go up I will tell you what is in your heart as soon as Saul saw Samuel the donkey started returning home nobody asked the donkey to return home as soon as Saul met with Samuel be careful what you call impossible there are graces that have been anointed to trivialize your challenges and make it look as if the devil does not exist three things happen when Saul met with Samuel number one he said is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance and he poured oil on his head and said three things will happen to you number one the ass the donkey that has been missing you will find out that restoration has happened the anointing can bring restoration that means just because it left you does not mean it left the earth it is still there under a certain condition it can come back number two he said on your way going you will find three men holding two loaves of bread they will salute you and they will give it to you as if they did not know what to do with the bread they bought bread and were on their way home but because of what was on you they will give you two loaves say favor say honor number three he says you will come to a garrison of the Philistines and when you get there something will happen to you and you will now begin to prophesy and he so prophesied that they said is Saul when did Saul who trained you we know how long it took for us to be prophets by what mystery did you access this anointing that by April you will invite someone and say come to my house and you'll be driving very far thinking is where he knew you to be the last time you met and he will tell you no 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 I forgot to tell you I'm no longer there listen can I tell you this please hear me I believe in diligence 
I believe in process but there is a prophetic advantage to living can I tell you this true dominion the zenith of dominion is dominion over time not things time you are truly walking in dominion when you can compress time and I will restore not the things the years let me tell you how God restores and I will pray with you I hope I'm not wasting your time that means you see in the presence of God there's nothing like past present and future that's a reality that only resides within the realm of men he only broke his realm into this tripartite the trinity of time past present and future to help mankind relate with him but God does not live in time he does not even live in eternity because eternity is also time it's just time without end God's realm is called now everything is a present reality you see in truth so when God reaches into what you call he can go into your yesterday and your tomorrow you see physically when you live yesterday you don't go back again that privilege was not given to men ordinarily except by the gifts of the spirit and you can tap into information but from a physical standpoint when it's gone it's gone but God will find out based on his predeterminate counsel listen carefully how God restores the things that should have happened to you because with every time God gives you there are things that should have happened if by demonic manipulation or your ignorance or carelessness that thing did not happen God will go back into it and push the thing to your future and make it happen again are we together so if by God's predeterminate counsel you should be in your own house by 2018 but by lack of sensitivity you did not take advantage of the prophetic word that came from the man of God maybe at that time you were not serious spiritually and you trivialized the word you see that now the house you are building now is not the same one that should have come so what God does is that instead of you going through the labor of building it he can fix that rep that blessing under a class of blessings called prepared blessings hear me there are times that God will send rain on your farm and the crops will grow well you will do the harvesting and the storage but there are times the urgency in your life does not require corn it requires bread directly both corn and bread it is still the same God who sends it God is able to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater what if the sower is hungry because there are times the sower is hungry and he will need to eat to have the strength to go and sow so God gives you bread so that from the strength of that bread you can go and sow are you learning now believing that the only channel of God's blessing is your farm you are limiting his potentials manna can come from heaven manna coming from heaven does not stop you from sowing it's an act of his mercy to make sure you are satisfied early then you go and sow your name is to be hallowed I spent one month it was a February sir the whole of that one month I was praying and studying on favor because I didn't come from a background that would easily give me that privilege and I knew that if I were to do ministry with integrity I would need the favor of God when I found the keys and found the grace I knew this was it I want to pray some prayers for you now and I want you to receive it listen you will thank your man of God and you will see the sincerity and the love in his heart 
after this meeting and the testimonies that follow listen it takes more than desire to excel the kind and the quality of grace that is upon you when we honor men we don't honor bodies we honor the sacrifice of alignment alongside the election of grace that has captured this vast dimension of graces upon their lives are we together I want to pray for this grace for favor number one Exodus 11 and verse 3 please give us Exodus 11 and verse 3 and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians moreover the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people notice if it is favor it works with the power of sight that means when the favor of God is upon you the only person who should not bless you is a blind man the moment they can make contact with you they are compelled by an anointing hold on the reason why Moses was great was that it was in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of the people when favor comes on you both the king and the people see you in a way that is deserving of favor exodus 3 21 and i will give joshua selman favor in the sight of the egyptians what is the proof of the favor and it shall come to pass that when ye go prophesy to yourself i shall not go empty esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the b part and esther obtained favor in the sight of how many all them that looked upon her not them who wanted to favor her your mistake was just to look the moment you can look the anointing works by the power of sight please i'm not just exciting you believe in what i'm telling you she obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her verse 17 same chapter read verse 17 if you're a christian one to read and the king loved esther above stop above above that means before esther came there were others he was looking at but as soon as she showed up he loved them but he loved her above and she obtained grace and favor again in his more than all the virgins so that he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti are you ready to receive I want to pray for you now the power of God will come on you you don't have to kneel just believe There is a lady here who is going to shout right now a loud shout under the anointing the moment that happens that grace for favor will begin to move across this is what i just saw in the spirit the power of god is coming on you it's not something you can stand it is it is these are dynamics of the anointing a loud shout is an anointing of the spirit that will come right now i'm ready to pray for you now father in the name of jesus christ by the spirit of the living god help them please i decree right now may that grace and that unction my goodness let it come upon you right now take that grace take that grace take that anointing help that lady please supernatural favor I decree and declare I place it as a mantle upon your head go and excel I shift systems and structures by the power of prophecy 
may that grace rest upon you find favor with systems find favor with structures find favor with Egyptians find favor with kings in the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is honor is a grace. Listen, you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred upon you by another. Honor is a grace that is transferable. Do you know what is, is honor? Honor means to be seen for who you truly are and to be rewarded to match the true worth of your person. That's what honor means. Favor means to be preferred, but honor means to be given the regard that befits your sacrifice. You can be great. But if honor is not on you, you will not be rewarded to match your true worth. Let me show you a scripture. Numbers 27 from verse 18 to 20. Let's hurry up for time. We're wrapping up now. The Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit already, and lay your hands upon him. Is that in your Bible? Verse 2. It says, Set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. Verse 20. Please read it if you are a Christian. One to read. And thou shalt put some of your honor on him. That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. People don't listen to you just because you are sincere. There is honor that comes upon you. Call Moses. He's already filled with the Holy Spirit. But lay your hands upon him. And then in anointing him, don't leave him like that. Transfer some of your honor to him. Honor is transferable. Can I pray for you? Father, just help those under the anointing. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. That in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. May that grace right now, may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. That grace for honor, everything that has despised your grace, everything that has despised the investment of God upon your life, I change that narrative by this mantle in the name of Jesus Christ. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is Joseph? Joseph. I'm hearing a name, Joseph. Who is that? Joseph. We're wrapping up. What do you do, my friend? I cannot. What do you, hold on. What do you do? What do you do? Who is a, who is a music minister here? You? Is, is he a member? Huh? You sing. Listen to me. You see that prayer on the iron gate? Go and pray that prayer when you go back. I want to pray for you. Because truly, God wants to lift you. But this, this is not just by human connections. It's not what. This is by the Spirit. I pray for you in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God.
may that grace that gives visibility something is coming on you right now take that grace now in the name of Jesus Christ you will never be the same take that grace by the power of the Holy Spirit God is there anybody here that works in access bank access bank access bank oh I know him I didn't even know he was one There are strange liftings that are coming to people in this place I stretch my hands three of you I, you don't have to kneel in the name of Jesus Christ I place an anointing upon you that in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ this grace for favor let it come upon you right now for your lifting you take that grace find favor even with your administrators in the name of Jesus and every conspiracy of darkness to implicate you we cancel it right now by the blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayers I want to release the grace for speed truly there is a grace for speed now hear me I don't know how we're going to do it I just have maybe less than two three minutes and I'm done thank you for your patience with me but I want to release this grace from the depth of my heart I told you true dominion is dominion over time now whether you are an usher or not please help me in this prayer because the hand of God will come on people and they will start running physically I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves and you can bring them out right now I stretch my hands this this ministry would be characterized by and with a strange order of speed I stretch my hands at the count of three my God I'm just seeing fire rest on people please bring us under the anointing right now at the count of three one bring them up two Three, take that grace now. Help them. Speed. Speed. Help them, please. My God. Speed. Speed. Receive that grace. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab. I command speed. Speed in business. Speed in ministry. Speed in career i cause the root of delay by the power that raised christ from the dead i cause a bakato shedegata prateske tebe katosiata embra katos katia receive speed receive speed receive speed in the name of jesus christ you'll never be the same speed 10 years in one year 10 years I prophesy 10 years in one year the result of 10 years in one year 10 years in one year in the name of Jesus Christ help that woman please in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me I stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of God 
in three months from today according to the mystery of the ark in the house of obed edom i stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and i speak to you between now and the next three months i shift you to a new season help them i shift you to a new season Hear me we're wrapping up that night could not the king sleep and he said bring me the chronicles and they opened the chronicles and he saw where Mordecai had saved the life of the king and was not rewarded hear me many of you have been part of the success story of many and yet you've been forgotten I stand by prophecy let the book of remembrance be open now there is an anointing coming on your wife sir I'm seeing an angel pour like oil on her and the Lord is saying she's entering a season of reward this is what I'm seeing in the spirit she's entering a strange season of reward let me say it again anyone who has forgotten you I stand in partnership with the grace of your man of God. May that book of remembrance be opened now. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, by this fire that is coming upon you, I decree and declare wherever the helpers of your destiny are in this abuja i speak to the north i speak to the east i speak to the south i speak to the west i command them to show up for you now <laughs> hallelujah last prayer point please hear me the bible says believe in the lord your god so shall you be established it says believe in his prophets so shall you prosper can i tell you this there are different dimensions and levels of wealth there is wealth that comes by providing value there is wealth that comes by relationships but there is wealth that comes by prophecy it says by this time tomorrow and when he said it the one who the king leans on said even if God will open the windows of heaven might this happen I want to pray for you praying the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness however in this kingdom we are not just left with economic principles there is a superior advantage that in addition to the value that we provide in addition to the relationships that come based on our impacting lives my life is a testimony I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension of wealth in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters I pray for you finally in this prayer session of fasting and praying in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God the same grace that took a raven and it brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherith the same grace that took coin and put it in the mouth of a fish the same grace that turned five loaf and two fish to feed five thousand people with 12 baskets remaining by the power of the prophetic in the name of jesus i connect you to strategic relationships <laughs> strategic relationships in the name of jesus In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let me encourage, particularly those who have come here for the first time, since God has brought you here, make it a commitment to commit yourself in prayer. Commit yourself. If just one meeting brought you this kind of impact, you can imagine what happens. He say, ye who have continued with me. 
And so let me lend my voice with your man of God to encourage you that more and more people continue to come and experience the good hand of God and that you have the staying power and the stamina to finish through in the name of Jesus. For those of you who have been exhausted, let fresh strength be supplied for you. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma. I sincerely appreciate you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.